Hi, my name is Mr. Goodell, and today I'm going to show you how to make your clay vessel. This could be a vase, it could be a cup, it could be a pencil holder, it could be a sculpture, it could be a lot of different things here, but we're going to start off with the slab. So the first thing you need to do is roll out your clay into just a general sphere shape. It does not have to be perfect. And then you're going to take that general sphere shape, and you're going to turn it into an ovoid. An ovoid is a 3D oval, so sort of like a potato is what I tell people. It looks sort of like a potato. Okay, we also call this an ovoid. So to just a potato shape just like that. I take that vertically, put it in between my two slats here. So I got my slats and my rolling pin. This is just a long wooden cylinder that I'm going to use to roll out my clay here. Now notice I start in the middle and just kind of roll it out here. As I do this, I want to make sure I don't want to shove down really hard. I just gently roll it out, and I don't want a long, skinny rectangle, so I don't want something super, super uh, skinny and long. I want to make it sort of just a rectangular or large oval shape here. Now, as I do this, I want to make sure that I flip it over on a regular basis so it does not stick, okay? Uh, many times, if you keep rolling it'll just actually stick to the table or the mat. Now notice I turned it around because I already noticed it was getting a little too long so I'm going to go ahead and roll it this direction. There we go. I'm going to flip it around again and I might flip it around a couple more times just like this to make sure I get the right shape. Now the reason why we use these slats on the end here is so that we don't make it too thin. It creates a nice uniform shape. Uniform means it's consistent. It's not really thick in one spot. It's not really thin in another spot. I'm going to make sure it's the same thickness all the way through and that's why we use these little slats. Now notice I keep flipping it over. That's very important. Can't say it enough. If you don't flip it over it's going to stick down there. And if you add water to it while you're doing this it will stick as well. So there we go. It's about as wide as I want it, so I'm going to turn around this other direction. Move my slats over here. Roll it out. The big thing you don't want is the clay to roll over like this, okay? So be careful of that. You don't want to go too fast with this process. Sometimes in these videos I go a little faster just to make sure the video isn't too long for you. But you definitely want to take your time. There you go. I'm going to make sure you have a nice even slab there. All right, I'm going to flip it over. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, not cut, but I'm going to draw the largest rectangle I possibly can make. So I'm going to turn this to the side so you can see it a little bit better there. And when you draw the largest rectangle, you can. You don't want to draw it small or anything like that. I want to make sure that I can draw it just as big as I possibly can. Notice I'm not drawing really deep. And if I do make it a little too deep, it's a little hard to fix those mistakes, okay? Like this got a little deep up here, and that's fine. You want to make it nice and shallow, so if you do make a mistake, you could just take your finger and erase it and redraw it, just like that. There you go. So notice the corners are touching there. You don't want to do this, okay? You don't want a shape that looks like this, real sloppy, not exactly a rectangle, too small, and the corners aren't touching the sides. You want to make sure that it's nice and big corners touching the edges there. You're ready to go ahead and cut it. Now, clay can be cut with a total different tool or the same tool. You could use the same stylus. It doesn't really matter. There's a lot of different tools that'll cut. I'll just use this tool right here that looks like a good cutting tool. So I'll go ahead and trim off these edges. Now, the most important thing you need to remember when you're working with clay is that it's wanting to dry out really fast. So the clay that I'm trimming off is not trash clay. It's clay that we need. It's clay that we're going to be using later on. So I'm going to take this clay, got a little water bucket right here, add a little water to it, just a little bit of water. Then I roll it into a sphere. The smaller the piece of clay, the faster it wants to dry out. So I take this, I'm going to save it for later. Now here's a hint. If you have more extra clay than you do in your rectangle, then you probably didn't use enough clay for your rectangle. This should only be a little bit left here. So I'll set that to the side there. Now I have my rectangle. I'm going to take just a touch, just a little bit of water. I'm going to clean up the edges. Okay, take your time with this, especially if you have rough edges. Maybe it got a little rough around those edges with the cutting tool that you were using. So you need to clean up your edges. Notice I did not add any water to it, so it's not going to stick 
to the mat. Sometimes if it starts to get a little dry, I will let people add a little bit of water to it just to keep it um, a little bit more hydrated there. Now listen, do not add too much water because then it actually makes the clay too floppy, too flimsy, and it just falls apart. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clay and turn it into a cylinder. I'm going to roll it over so you can see the cylinder shape right now starting to take shape there. And where it touches, I need to score and slip. So I'm going to take this, this edge right here. I'm going to grab my one of my favorite tools for doing this, just a paper clip that I've bent over a lot of different tools. We'll do the same thing. Now I'm going to score both edges that are going to touch. And you see that mistake that I made on purpose right there? I'm going to have that on the inside. So just go ahead and ignore that. I'm going to draw tons and tons of lines here. This is the score step of the score and slip method. You want lots of lines just like that. And the other side, these lines need to match. They can't crisscross. You want them to line up. All right. The more lines you have, the better so that when you connect them that they will interlock and when they dry and are fired in the kiln the clay will actually lock together and it won't come apart very easily. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little bit of water I'm going to drop it in those lines. I'm not trying to smooth these lines over. A lot of people make the mistake of actually taking the water and then smoothing over the lines. Nope. You want to just drop that water in. You can do both sides. Don't add too much water because if you add too much, it actually does the reverse. It does the opposite. It actually will start making it hard to connect. Now I'm going to roll up my cylinder again and I'm going to press those lines together. You see how I'm pressing those together so they kind of smoosh together there. Now I'm going to take my time with this. I don't want to go really fast. Sometimes I use if I can get my hand to support on the inside or sometimes I use a tool on the inside okay just to kind of support it as I'm taking those pieces of clay and putting them together those lines are just gonna go together you should have a motion of this like this kind of pushing that clay together you don't want to just kind of have them touch and then it'll fall apart when it's dry or in the kiln now I'm kind of, I'm just taking my time. You don't have to rush this. This is one of the most important parts of this project. Now notice I'm starting to kind of smooth over some parts. So I'll lift it up. Got to be careful. You can still see the seam right there. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to push those pieces in the middle together. And then I'm going to smooth it over with my hand. I'm not too worried about the shape right now. It's not a perfect cylinder. I'm not worried about that. What I am concerned about is am I getting a good seam there? If you do your seam really well, you shouldn't actually see the seam anymore. I've had students say, I can't actually find my seam anymore. And that's a good thing. That means they sealed it up really well most of the time. Now, not only should it be seamed, sealed up on the outside really well, I got some more work to do there. It should be sealed up on the inside as well really well and you can actually take a tool and seal it up on the inside too just like that okay now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my extra clay after I got that all connected I'm gonna take my extra clay that I saved this gets a little too wet um, it might stick to the mat here or to the table so don't get it too wet I'm gonna roll out another slab I want this to match the bottom of my cylinder. You can actually turn these into different shapes, and I'll show that to you in a minute here. Notice it was starting to stick to the table there. I've got to be careful. Here's a hint. If it starts to stick to the table or to the mat, just got to move it in a different place there. Maybe that spot was just a little too wet. Maybe it accidentally get, got some water there or whatever. I want to make sure that I flip it over too, like we mentioned earlier. There we go. Now I have a shape nice enough for the bottom of my cylinder here. There we go. I can create the bottom. Here's the one thing I want to remind you of is that you can actually form this into different shapes. So I can take this and turn it into a triangular prism or I can turn it into a rectangular prism. I could work on that. I could do that same thing to the other side or here's kind of the clever thing. I can keep it like a cylinder or a triangular prism on one side and when I flip it over it's a totally different shape on the other side. Maybe I want to make this a rectangular prism on this side. So you can have those options as well. But now I'm just going to go ahead and just flip this over 
and I'm going to, I'm going to keep this just a cylinder right here, just for the sake of this video right here. It's not perfect, but I can fix it later. Maybe I'll keep it a rectangular prism on the bottom. I'll take my stylus tool. I'm going to trace the bottom here so you can kind of see what it looks like there. I placed it on top of this other slab. Now I'm going to trace that shape on the bottom just like this. There's my shape. Then I'm going to cut it out just like this and just like what we always do with our extra clay. We take it, add a little bit of water to it, roll it into a sphere. Just a rough little lump of clay. Put it to the side. We'll save that for later. Now I need to add lines to this. Lots of lines. I'm going to do that all the way around where those two pieces are going to touch. The cylinder I just got done making and this bottom piece. Here's another little hint too. When you cut clay, sometimes it wants to stick to the table or to the mat. So before I even attach the top part, I make sure that I can lift this part up. If you have trouble with it, it wants to stick, you can just use a scraper tool and kind of peel it up. You might have to reshape it just a little bit. There we go. Now I flip this around. I'm going to add all my lines to this. Now it's important that the lines go in the same direction. And do remember, you want lots and lots of lines, okay? hundreds of lines. Some people think I exaggerate when I say that, and I'm not. You want hundreds and hundreds of lines. The more lines, the better. Okay, there we go. And again, different tools can do this step. I just like using a little paper clip here. It tends to work pretty well. Add a little bit of water. This time I'm just going to add it just to the cylinder right here just like that because I can feel that this clay has a little too much water in it so I don't want it getting too flexible for me. I take this piece, flip around my cylinder which is a rectangular prism on the bottom. There we go. I can use my tool on the inside to kind of shape it. Sometimes we can't get our fingers or our hand down on the inside so I just use a tool to shape it. Now I'm going to gently take these walls and press them in a downward motion. So I'll flip this on the side gently so you can kind of see this. I'm going to be pressing this down, making sure it doesn't stick to the mat, pressing it down. And then along the bottom, I'm going to start sealing it up just like I finished sealing it up last time.